Why did you have such a limited role in Legacy? Was there a conflict or? I right can't wait to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> because Tron Legacy is not about us old parts running around anymore. It's about passing the torch. I mean, uh, I've heard that, you know, why wasn't Cindy Martin in it? Why wasn't, well, well you want to just do the old movie all over again? It's a new movie. It's a new generation. Uh, we were just there to lend a little bit of the past. And the rest is for young Garrett and Wild and carry on. What about Tron Uprising? I have no idea. It just went away. There wasn't enough people watching it. They didn't have the ratings. Sorry, folks. That's what I mean, there is it. I mean, I'm talking to the choir here. There's not enough of you. <laughs> you need ratings. They need to be able to sell. You know, and that's all I ever heard. But it never really got officially uh, canceled. It's just a Disney Channel. Um, I think they learned too late, it just skewers to a much smaller set. Tron Uprising had a little more of a themes and stuff uh, that were probably a little older than what is the normal audience for uh, uh, the Disney channels. So they're, they, believe me, they were disappointed, scratching their head, going, what did we do wrong, you know? Um, so, who knows? Great cast in that one. I, I was going to say, I sometimes think people uh, you know, uh, audience or fans uh, imagine that actors have more influence than they do. You know, that's like a negotiate point. If you get to be a really big star, you can negotiate where you have script approval and what's going to happen. For the most part, I guess that. No, no. I guess that. that. Jeff's maybe, maybe a Jeff maybe. bigger part in legacy, but you didn't, you know, they don't have I was, I was, to answer your question, I was so thankful to have any part of legacy. Believe me, I talked to Peter, you know, and I said, I, I can't believe this is 30 years, 28 years of that time. You know, that they were going to do this again, but... Hell, it's called Tron. I thought you should have a big one. Yeah. No, I had not. And then ask me. Yeah. Well, and to tell you the truth, we shot the beginning of the movie six, six, seven months after uh, we had uh, finished shooting Tron Legacy in, in Vancouver. They got, this is the difference between these big studio productions. They had the luxury of looking at it again, going, okay, uh, they, there's always a clause in the contract that you, you have, they have to reshoot something, but then they got to renegotiate. It's not funny thing, right? But they did. They did reshoot. They just changed the beginning of it, and we had a new beginning to it. So I wasn't. Uh, I was actually not in it as much in the original shoot, and they gave me that boardroom scene when uh, the little dog uh, uh, comes off the screen, you know, and he foiled. So you see Sam's. Uh, shenanigans happen as opposed to being told about it. You actually see him act it out and, and do it. That wasn't in the original uh, story. And that whole boardroom scene, which uh, again, I was doing another picture out in Simi Valley, uh, which is very far away from downtown Los Angeles. They flew a helicopter. This is so exciting to hear. Is that they flew a helicopter and come and get me. I wrapped up this little Hallmark movie. Did they pick you up on a hoist and pull you up? No, they landed. <laughs> no, just like that. Yeah. They landed on the middle of a cow pasture. I was doing a, a western thing. Yeah. And they picked me up, and in 14 minutes I was landing on the old, old AT&T building. Really cool. Under. It was so cool. They made a small film that was called Get Fox Lander. Yes. <laughs> Do you remember the last, the very last shot in the original Tron? Jeff comes swooping in in the helicopter and Greetings for and and I practically got blown off the roof. That's yeah. the truth. <laughs> so I was going, since the hair went flying, oh my God, it was um, That's the same building I got in. And we shot. <laughs> yeah, and uh, they wanted to have me come out of the helicopter going, saying Jeff's line, Greetings program. But we got there too fast and the film crew was still trying to get up from the bottom floor. I was already on the <laughs> But then we shot all night there. We shot that opening scene in Toronto and Legacy all night long and left uh, at 5.30 the next morning. Are there any waters out there in the back? Did, did you bring an empty bottle? No, I, that was full. Oh, oh, I am <laughs> with my table taking a lot of water. Yeah. Uh, anyway, anybody have any questions? Uh, you know? Uh, yes, sir? Sure. They got one back there. I don't have to take okay. it. I think I'll get one. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone wants to know that. I, it's way above my pay grade, to tell you. Um, yes, there's a, you can go on YouTube and get more information than I can give you. Uh, Joe Kaczynski, who uh, had a relatively uh, a good
good success with this Tom Cruise movie Oblivion. Uh, he's, that was what was holding up. They, they'd gone through a couple of scripts. They had a script, and uh, I knew Jeffrey Wigato. That's all I know. Um, but like I said, Disney's got a full slate now. Do they really need another Tron? Tron Legacy didn't do all that well financially. I hate to tell you that. But uh, it did okay, but not, maybe not good enough to garner another picture. Um, and now they've got Star Wars. And I think they're going to be probably emphasizing that. So I don't know. I don't know. But I heard, I mean, I saw Joe at this WonderCon in Anaheim uh, when he was out uh, advertising, uh, promoting Oblivion, and he said, um, you know, they got this. Still finishing the script, he should know. But you know, it's all about studio politics and money. You know. And Bottom line drives a lot of things. It does. It does. Marvel. Now they've got you know Marvel too. They've got Marvel uh, and uh, and the Star Wars franchise. Uh, I'm not hearing anything about it anymore. Would I be in it? I don't know. I, mean, I would hope so. But that's that's something that's not our choice. You know? More than ever. I mean. I, there was a time, of course, when Hollywood was just a couple of guys making decisions in studios, and and but well, through the course of our careers, it's really changed too. Have, don't you say? It's such a huge corporate level. Yeah, it's really it's, it's really a about the market, market. You know, running the numbers, and what should we? How? Why should we do it? You know? mm -hmm. I mean, it's GE, NBC, Universal, General Electric. You know, I mean, these are huge major mega corporations, and uh, even the movie studios have to go outside of themselves now to get. Funding, they have to go outside. Those uh, they never had to do that. They were always in house. Now they have to get the funding. Big big and these big movies, folks. I'm sorry for all you sci-fi fans. They're going to go away soon. They're too damn big. They're too damn costly. The age of the small business. It's just what happened in the 1960s, uh, early 60s, and early 70s, when the indie uh, we call them indie movies now. But these big tentpole, these big mega movie or all these things, um, they're getting, they're not making the money back. And they're caught, they're getting, it's getting more and more costly, so smaller movies. You're gonna see the Academy Awards this year with little films like Nebraska, and uh, oh my gosh, what else is there? Um, uh, Scotty Cooper's movie, uh, Out of the Ferns, these dramas and stuff. This is so reminds me of the independent, in the indie movement that happened when in the 1960s, these big bloated, Movie studio productions. We're not filling the movie houses anymore. People aren't going to the theaters as much as you. It's more costly to go to a movie now. That's why we have these big boxes. You know, and television. Television's where all the good work is happening now. The really great work. I think truly is cable TV that's the best. Huh? HBO, Netflix. Mm -hmm. We have all these avenues opening up now. That's why they're making movies. Uh, uh, I'm sure you have it here in Texas. You can go to a movie theater. You've got a restaurant in the theater now, or a bar. And you get, I mean, there's a movie theater in, in Los Angeles, where I live, uh, where a waiter comes up to you. You got a little table with a light and a menu, and you got, you know, it, because they have to drag people out of their own home entertainment places nowadays. Because we've all we're all making our own such great, you know, we're so accessible. Place. We're in competition with shrimp cocktails. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be in a movie, but I, I hope there'll always be Tron. To answer, but I hope there will be. Um, you know, I think the fact that we're still talking about it this these many years later it must resonate somehow.